I have gone all the way from the east to the west, and much more stronger than any man during the history of mankind to declare the truth. Regardless of all the differences between religions, I was born to a Muslim family. But the fact is, there is only one God, there are only three books sent by God, which are the Torah, the Gospel, and the Quran, and Muhammad was the seal of the prophets. No matter which religion we follow, God's word never changes. God's existence cannot be denied, and we all worship one God no matter what we might call him. Each individual has a direct connection with God through their heart. God's power is always over all other powers, and none of the powerful people could have ever created a planet like Earth with everything including on it. For instance, it took us thousands of years until somebody finally succeeded to invent a plane to fly, while God has shown his power in creating many different flies and birds from the day one of his creation. When I looked at God's creation and compared them with people's invention, I could see nothing but God's permanent beauty, power, and perfection in His creation. For example, when you compare a forest with a city, you will see that the forest remains a forest forever if we do not destroy it, but a city will turn into dust after years if we don't renew or renovate its buildings. A tree and a bird have life, but a plane or a building are just some non-living things. Since my childhood, my biggest fear has been war, fights, and seeing humans' blood that takes people's life away. I 
I've been always curious to know what the reason behind wars was since the beginning of creation. My grandmother used to say all wars are caused by politicians and it's their dirty game to feel powerful like winners always. They're a bunch of unbelievers and do not believe in God. I was not never convinced that God is just sitting up there in heavens to let politicians go on with their bloody games forever. There should have been an end to all their evil deeds. What is the difference between humans and animals if our world keeps going on like this? Why would God send us prophets and holy books? What is our end as human beings? We'll all die and what will happen then? There should be a day of judgment. Otherwise, what was God's purpose to create us? Why should we obey God's word if we just come to live for a few years, die after all and won't be held responsible for our deeds? must be wiped out building by building, street by street. Nazi rear guard action is fanatical as they try to stem the red tide. Watch this soldier. A sniper gets him. Since October 1996, I had my first vision of the man in white. In the years followed, there had always been visions and dreams before this political case happened to me, but I never took them seriously. In fact, during the eight years of living in hell over my night vision goggle generation tree case, since 29th November 2004 till my freedom from the U.S. federal prison on 13th July 2012, I learned that God had a great plan for me, and while he was training me to become more stronger, he slowly but surely was answering all my questions. I looked back to my own life and saw that I started to be too busy with my small family's daily life, like billions of other people, and had become a slave of money rather than being a free servant of God, since I had become a single mother at the age of 20. Clearly, money's power had been replaced with God's power. Life has come too difficult for billions of people that they think their life depends just on money. Nowadays, right from the moment people wake up, all they think of is money. The rich are planning on how to get more money to gain power and live longer, while the poor are working hard just to get their daily bread and survive another day of their life. The majority of people only truly turn to God when they are on hospital bed or afflicted with a serious disease that money cannot save them. Melika, Melina! Hale! Bia, Mama! Okay! Bia! Bia, 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 Bia,
look at Noah. Look at all of these girls now they're grown. No one works for free, and generally, no money, no honey. The world is just revolving around money, and the majority has forgotten to worship God. People worship riches and always try to serve and satisfy them in any possible way. Joy and happiness for many rich people is just based on food, sex, and being worshipped. Then, seriously, what is the difference between humans and animals? At least animals fill in their natural needs of living and live for free in jungles without any written rules. Hello and welcome to The Importance of Apostrophe S. Now the subject of this program is Shahzad Mir Ghali Khan. My name is Kaveh Taghvi and as an anchor I've had the pleasure of talking to her under circumstances that uh, was very unique and that was during the time that she was in jail. She spent five years there and she joins us right now to tell us about her experiences not so much on the political side but rather on the spiritual side. Welcome Shahzad. In those times, um, I started, you know, slowly, slowly asking God while I was in prison, dis totally disconnected with the outside world. Remembering my own life when I was out there and just seeing the people around me. And I had a few co questions from God. My first question was, nowadays, God, Lord, what happened to the humanity? Why people are acting more like, you know, animals instead of human beings? Everywhere that you go and you see, it's all depending on just food, uh, you know, having sex, and uh, just this is, this is all people are living on, the majority of, of people. Then um, the answer that I got slowly, slowly was, okay, Satan has replaced money with humanity on earth right now. So people, uh, the majority of people, run after evil more than good. Then my second question was, what happened to love? Because if you have love in your heart, no matter how much others might be evil, still you cannot respond to evil by an, another evil act, if you are a good person. Then the answer was, uh, money enslaved love. So I was like, Lord, what should I do to bring justice out? I mean, I know as much as I'm just an inmate fighting with U.S. government, okay, there are thousands and millions of li like me that they're fighting, they get nowhere. What do I do? So I got to the conclusion that I have to use my wisdom and use my pen. The program called The Importance of uh, Apostrophe S. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hearing Sharsad's story. For a little while, I had doubts if the pressure of my incarceration had driven me crazy or insane. And because I was lonely and powerless in my battle with the U.S. government, I am creating an imaginary God who was answering my questions 
with convenient answers that would raise hope for me to stand still and fight for justice. But who could have helped me to stand against the U.S. injustice system except God? No government, even my own Iranian one, ever dared or wanted to stand for my violated human rights and fight for me within their so-called international justice system. My parents were doing all they could, but all their efforts got nowhere. So, what else would I lose if I trusted God and keep writing? I was not the only one whose human rights were violated, and surely there are many other people like me who had no power to fight evil politicians. What if I was not delusional and God wanted me to obey his words in this way? At the end, if I was not chosen by God to serve this purpose, all my writing will be vanished and at least on the day of judgment, I could keep my head up in front of God and tell him to judge them based on my life's record as I was their witness on the earth. At least I would follow God's word and fight for the truth. Of course, God judges us based on our own deeds, and he would never punish me because of writing to all those politicians that I worship the only one God who is the supreme power of the universe, and I do not worship them and money. Why should I worship money and politicians while none of them will help me out when I'm in trouble? What should I fear from anymore as the worst had happened? I was just an inmate behind the bars while politicians' life was going on filled with limited joy and happiness. The U.S. government was responsible for my safety and security, and they couldn't execute me if I started writing to them about my God and his power. For sure, those unbelievers would mock me and would never take my godly letter seriously, but my God will endorse his will. I remember before I go to the United States, one night I had a vision, and without even thinking, I wrote a letter to American Embassy in Cyprus as follows. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This means in the name of God to the Embassy of United States Then I put the address and wrote from Shahzad Mirwali Khan Dear Counselor As per as our two previous phone conversation dated on 5th November 2007 and 15th November 2007 First of all, I would like to thank you for your kind and respectful correspondences. Although you never got back to me, but I know you are just an employee there and you are not entitled to make any decision regarding my problems. Then I kept writing some more facts and almost at the end of the letter I wrote, I am not willing to be a political victim anywhere in this world anymore. Everyone knows that the media is the most powerful tool all over the world and their food is news, more especially when it is true. The day I talk to the media, I will tell them the truth. My main concern is humanity, not politics. 
So, now it's close to the end of my life story, and it is up to you to show to the world who is America. At the end of the letter, I wrote, Now I'm done, and whatever decision you make, this time, the world will judge you. Although my case was a political case, I chose to trust God and decided to stand up against evil politicians till the day I die or the day I can bring an end to their evil deeds. On 28 December 2007, I wrote this letter to Allah. Oh God, I don't know how I should thank you. Thank you, dearest, I called to Malika and Melina. They are fine. Mommy and Daddy are fine as well. So thanks a lot. I'll wait. I need nothing more than their well-being. Thanks again. At 6.27 p.m. FTC Miami. Another letter to Allah on 3rd May 2008. Dear God, thank you so much for everything, but you know I am extremely hopeless and tired of this miserable life. I was just trying to survive with hope and fight for my children's life. The happiness even didn't last for 24 hours in my entire life. I have faith in you and you know that but I see no more reason to fight with this world's life and survive. I'll fight more for what? Okay, I'll prove to the world that UAE, Austria, and the United States took away my living rights. Then what will happen? Will they pay me off? You know that I don't want it. Who can give me back the last four years of my children's life except you? I am still satisfied with your satisfaction, but you know that is too much. Love you, Lord, your little servant, Shahrazad. Slowly, slowly, I established some sort of special connection with God whom I call Allah. All I had to do was write what God wanted me to tell them. All my letters were always a combination of politics and religion. I learned from the beginning that my responsibility is just write them the letters and obey God. The rest was going to be taken care of by my God. I knew they would call me crazy and insane, but I was sure the truth will come out one day, and in the end, they would be the losers. 
My name has started to be publicized in all international news, TV and radio channels and newspapers in different languages since the end of 2004 and my story was something that people would talk about, good or bad. Although no one picked my story as a matter of humanity, but surely the media were interested in my story as a political matter involving Iran and United States. As I used to have a TV production company in Dubai and worked in the field of media, I knew that the media and especially the internet were the most powerful tool in the 21st century to put whatever you wished in the public's hand. internet is the most powerful tool that everybody can share their testimony online and let's embarrass evil with good. The way I was writing my letters to politicians was not a very appropriate official way of writing powerful people like the way a normal Iranian national would be writing to a decent person. Not only I was not asking for their mercy to set me free from the prison, indeed, I was writing them with full authority to persecute them. I have sent all my letters to 186 embassies as certified mail with return receipt that on the day all my letters reaches public hands, evil politicians cannot deny its receipt. For instance, some part of my letters to all kings, presidents, religion rulers, queens and their followers around the globe that was handwritten dated on 27th March 2009 and sent to all foreign embassies in the United States was like this. Wake up, open your eyes and ears and listen carefully to what I am telling you all. Then I wrote some political matters and I continued as follows. Wow, how nice. If you knew everything, then why were you causing fear within all nations? Why were you sending innocent young generations to war as your servants in your army, navy or military, while all your claims were false and you were supporting terrorist attacks behind the curtain? Tell me now, did you ever send any of your own bloody children to war? Or were they ever killed in one of those horrible terrorist attacks? Why didn't you go to war by yourself? Why did all terrorist attacks destroy and vanish only million innocent people within all nations? Oh really? Because you didn't want to die? How about all those faithful soldiers that you killed? How about their broken-hearted family? Do you think my God and I could have only seen as blindly as you and your gods do? Or you were witnessing what we were witnessing too? Look, you want to kill me? It doesn't matter at all, as my death is not going to deactivate underground nuclear weapon production lines. 
You wanna go to war with Iran? Hmm, it is going to be World War 3. Means nuclear war. Then every single thing that was explained in holy books such as when the mountains blow ice powders, when the earth put everything out, is fulfilled and come true. And surely, all of you know that combination of natural gas with nuclear bomb results the end of the world. Then be sure, even though if you are planning to move to the moon, there is no time for you. The painful part that evil doers will suffer from in close future is because of their own ignorance to believe in God and my written words. Alhamdulillah. After my freedom on 7th August 2012, I first went to Muscat and reunited with my children and mother. Then I scanned over 25,000 pages of my letters and documents in the first three days and nights of my stay in Muscat, copied all my soft copy documents on many DVD and flash drives, of course, forgot some of them in the hotel, and finally, on 13th August 2012, I came back to my father in Tehran without fearing anything or anyone any longer. Then, on 13th November 2012, I wrote a letter to President Obama and advised him about distributing of all my documents via a DVD or flash drive around the globe. And I gave him enough time. If they have any objection, they should have advised me at any time prior to 25th December 2012. The letter attached to a DVD including all my records was delivered by myself in person to someone at American Interest Section located in Switzerland Embassy in Tehran. Iranian female imprisoned in the U.S. has arrived home. Shahzad Mirghuli Khan arrived at Tehran's Imam Khomeini Airport on Sunday. She came from Oman where she arrived there a week earlier after being released from almost five-year incarceration in America. In two months, I got back to my normal life like billion other people and left politicians alone to keep busy with their oil and blood games. The reason of making these programs and writing the book was just getting myself introduced to the world as a simple human being, a simple Iranian single mother who wants to stand up against evil doers to secure her children's future life and stop war and bleeding on the earth. Neither I have come to you to talk about any religion, promote one and deny the other, and disrespecting your religion beliefs, nor telling you all politicians are evil doers. You can go on with your own faith and government's behavior, but my main word is about humanity and love, existence of one supreme power that is called God, and witnessing all your thoughts and deeds day and night. I am telling you, if you try not to violate any law in front of security cameras that are put everywhere nowadays, or do your best not to leave any footstep in cameras record for others about your wrongdoings, God's camera is on capture since you are born till the day you die. His records cannot be deleted 
altered or lost and it's capturing all your moves day and night. Your ignorance or accepting my words, it's up to you and I am not held responsible for your actions. Hallelujah! Finally, after 12 years of negotiations, it seems that they just established some kind of understanding of each other. Would it stop ISIL actions? Who is the next country after Iran? My main question from 5 plus 1 is, isn't it true that there should have been an evil thoughts behind making evil weapons? So, whom are you fooling around? If you're talking about humanity and peace, why didn't you hold meetings to shut down all nuclear weapon industries around the globe and clean up the earth of its damages? Why didn't you sanction United States, Saudi Arabia, and Israel at least for two years to stop all terrorist acts? As you see, 10-year sanctions on Iran, war with Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Palestine, and Yemen didn't destroy the terrorist groups, and indeed, every day we are having a new, stronger one. So, isn't all your talks about money So what do you think about this 5 plus 1? It was very historic and very important, a major step. Well, I'm happy with the results. Aren't you happy? I am happy, but I was more confident on this matter if they just sign and they just don't put conditions. They're not offering any alternatives. So if they want to wipe this deal or agreement or whatever you want to call it away, they have to offer something in return, right? And they're not. I mean, war, there might be another alternative. Now, 
Let's stop the world for a few minutes and ask all politicians and powerful people around the globe. Do you really believe your gods of the world? Do you really believe you can own the world with war and bleeding? Do you really think if you attack Iran, she cannot attack Israel in a blink an eye and let the world to World War III? Do you really think God needs your assistance to destroy his creation? What will you gain out of wars? Some more piece of land to extend your empire? What are you gaining with all your own made terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda, Taliban and ISIL? United States of America succeeded to travel to the moon. She succeeded to watch people's life on Earth via their military satellites and monitor people's call via their advanced technology. How come they can't find terrorist groups? Whom are you fooling around? What is the difference between your actions and evil deeds? What is your end? Where will you take all these money and power after your death? Who are you without money and power? What can you do to save the world from evil's hand without war and bleeding? What would you do if all human nations stopped working for you? What would you do if all human nations stopped worshipping money? What will happen if all human nations peacefully go and line up in the streets and ask for world peace? Can you imprison all peaceful protesters in all countries? Can you provide them with food, clothes and medicine based on your own human rights law while incarcerating them? Well, US government couldn't provide it to me. What will happen if for 10 days and nights all human nations stop working for money all around the world and start asking God for honey? Do you believe if all human nations be set free from money's slavery, still evil world will not crash down and you can stay in power? Do you truly believe you can deny me and my letters to you if I share them with all human nations? think you can deny my violated human right on the day of judgment in front of God in the same way US government have proceeded with my case in their justice system? Do you really think you can bribe God on that day to take a blank eye on your evil deeds to my children and I in the same way US government bribed Austria? Then what does God need your money for? when he is the owner of the world. Is that my problem that I wrote you about the truth and you, keep, you kept ignoring me? Is there any human within you to stand by me to overcome evil politicians without war and bleeding? Or still, I'm wasting my time and breath to keep talking and questioning some ignorant people. Perhaps majority of American politicians and their allies are not going to answer any of my questions, but I'm confident few will come and stand by me to support humanity on earth. Of course, evil ones will say, oh man, she's just a woman, ignore her. But let me tell you something, Oman is a blessed land that its king called Sultan Qaboos just support humanity and love. 
He is not running after power, fame, and money, and always acts quiet for the sake of God, and never looks for a word from anyone for all his good deeds. As a witness to his brilliant good work, I testify that I have seen nothing but good from His Majesty and Omani people. Since I got to know them, they always cared for me as a person, a human, not as an Iranian or a political option. I am quite sure, in the same way that they have done all their efforts to establish peace between Iran and United States, they'll support humanity and love. I always say, if we would only have just few other kings, president or prime minister like His Majesty on this earth to stand for humanity and love, overcoming evil politicians without war and bleeding is a piece of cake via media. Anyhow, it has been promised by God that, on the day all secrets will be out, men will have no power to stand against God's justice. Just to remind you with God's word in Holy Quran, noon, by the pen and by the record which they write, you are not by the grace of your Lord mad or possessed. And now I would say to the world, Follow my footsteps and praise God that the peace is close by.